Welcome to Agents of the Brokerage Podcast. I am your host, Todd Back, and today our guest is Ryan Kamenish. Ryan, how are you doing? Todd, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Man, we're so excited to have you on. I really appreciate it. And Ryan, let's kick right off, man. Give me kind of a quick intro about yourself. Okay, so um, I'm a realtor here here at your office, and i um, been doing it for about four years. Grew up in Winchester, kind of a Kentucky native. I went to Berea College, was homeschooled, which is kind of a, a weird one. A lot of people don't know. And uh, yeah, I worked in some uh, construction and project management before I got into real estate. Um, and yep, yeah, that's, that's kind of a summary. Quick overview. Yeah, yeah. I love it. That's yeah. perfect. We'll go from there. Yeah, man. If, so, if, if you need more details, just oh ask. yeah, I will. I'll try I will. to keep it keep it brief, man. <laughs> so, so give me the the scoop. Four years ago, right when you're thinking about getting into real estate, why did why did you get into it? What were you thinking? Yeah. So the, so actually, at the time, I I had this really good friend of mine who um, got into real estate. Um, I had already bought my first house, uh, and I. I to be honest, I didn't find the real estate agent as someone who like was super relevant or brought a lot of value necessarily. It, of course, I was an ignorant like first time home buyer. I'm sorry, but it, and um, so I, I was, I kind of was skeptical. I, I kind of thought real estate agents they're kind of of the past. You know, you can get on Zillow, you can find everything that a realtor can do. I, I mean, I ended up finding the house that I bought and the realtor just unlocked the door. And so I didn't really see what that value was. And, um, I had done some sales jobs and my buddy who got, who I worked with in another sales job got in real estate and loved it. And he was just killing it. He was, um, finding new ways to add value to people. And he, he was actually in Campbellsville. His name's Steven Olegas and we'll shout out for him. Shout out Steven. Yeah. yeah. So, we grew up together, and, and and then he went off and did that, and and just really enjoyed it, and uh, it kind of inspired me to to look into it, and so, um, yeah, I, I reached out to some realtors that I knew, and kind of asked around, and started classes, and it's kind of you just jumped right in. Well, yeah, sort of. I mean, I I worked part time at a couple of jobs um, while I was getting started and going through real estate school, but. Love it. Yeah. Perfect, man. And and I do want to get into that, too, about what you said about the, the value proposition of a realtor. And when you were looking, what you kind of, you did not see the value, right? Sure. And, and you're like, you know, I can probably bring something more to this. Um, and I'd say, too, with your, with your eight, because how, how, would you like to tell the audience how, how, I think, how old you are? Well, I'm 30 now, so 30. Yeah, I don't 30. Know. Should I be embarrassed or proud of that? I don't know. I'd be very proud because right. you're you're yeah. doing a, an awesome job. So I'd be very proud because I think there's a lot of people who they want to work with you because you relate to them and you know what they're looking for and you give them a lot of inside info that it's hard for other people to get. And and what I'm getting at is that, you know, when I see your business and see the things you're passionate about, <coughs> there you go, I'm Ryan. Sorry. You just, you can't get that info just looking at, you know, different places. You know, a lot of people, you know, things that are going on and you provide that value to your clients, which I love. Cause I think that's the, that's, that's where things are going is that niche market that you are very, very good at and well-versed at. Well, I'm so, trying anyway. so Ryan, what is, what's your favorite aspect of being in real estate right now? Man, that's a that's a good question. I think there's a lot a lot of things that I love about it, um, and it it ranges, you know, from day to day. You know, the flexibility flexibility is is awesome. Being my own boss, you know, being in control, and and just like adding value to to like every interaction. Ultimately, that's my goal, right? And um, you know, you talk about finding that value proposition, um, and and kind of presenting different value propositions for different situations. Um, but of course we all as humans, we want to, to be uh, a value, be an asset to the relationships and the interactions that we, um, encounter, come across. And I, I found in real estate that I've got, um, 
I've got the ability to bring value and to educate or inform um, and just help people. And it's, yeah. it's that's really fun. Um, so yeah, I guess if that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that, I think that's it, you know, at the end of the day, um, from what I see with, with you and how you run your business is it, that's it, you know, it's to help people and to put them in a, the spot that's will make them most successful. Right. And, you know, I think you do a great job. Of well, thanks, doing man. That, so I'm trying now let's, let's go on the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> okay. I can't wait for this answer. What is, what, for you, Ryan Kamenish, is your least favorite part of this job? Yeah. Mm. So, you know, I was fortunate enough to hear a couple of the podcasts before. And, uh, you know, I have to agree with, I, I thought for sure that, you know, John Black well, and, and Hilliard were both going to say uh, the inspections. Yes. You know, because I think that's just a common. And, and it's, that, it's that one part of the process where you, you're just kind of flipping a coin. You, you get in there and you're like, I think I've, I think I've checked everything out on this house the best I can. Um, you know, we've looked at electric plumbing, HVAC, you know, roof, all that stuff. And we've tried to assess it. And then the inspector comes in and drops a bomb on you and it can, you know, it can really ruin the situation, which, which, you know, ultimately is maybe for the best, probably for the best for your client and you have to do it. But that one's, that one's a, yeah. that's a beast. Um, and then also, you know, just trying to, I think one of the other things that can be really frustrating is just the inconsistent income. Um, you know, the feast or famine thing is very real and, you know, we're, we're having steak dinner and five closings in a week, one time, and then it's two months without a paycheck. And, uh, you know, you're, you're just kind of looking at the bank account, like, what are we going to do? So that part can be a little stressful. I, you know, I'm a little bit, I'm not a budget guy. I don't like budgets. They, they feel too constricting. And so, uh, that doesn't really go well with, uh, being a real, you really need to have a budget. And so, yeah, um, but we're working on that. We're working on it, right. you know, and, and my wife's very supportive and helpful and she's a lot smarter than I am. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yes, but, me too. Yeah. Um, so she helps me stay on track, but, uh, and, and I'm getting better. You know, the, the more success that you, you find, the easier it is to kind of allocate funds. Yep. When you're just getting started, it can be a real challenge. Yep. Uh, you know, if you, if you go two, three months without a closing. Yeah. Uh, so. and, and I think too, cause I, I've been on that, that path and that journey to where you're like, as life changes and, yep you like priorities change and where you're spending money changes. And then, and then also the longer you've been in real estate, I think you see the, the ebbs and flows and the cycles. And then you start to be like, okay, like this is what I need to do. And you know, I am, uh, I'm stubborn. And so I know sometimes I just, I just have to go through it and then you figure it out and you kind of get your game plan. So totally agree with that, man. So, So Ryan, what, what you're you're a super talented guy you're into a lot of different things um you're a, a downtown specialist as i like to call it. you know sure. things that are going on down there and you could you could do a lot of different things mm-hmm. right so what is it that keeps you in real estate right now what keeps you in this business man i think so i think part of it well really i think the the biggest thing um when I think about why I, why I enjoy it and and what what makes me so excited is um, is I've surrounded myself with people I really like and respect and um, you know this office being you know first mention um, I th- I think if I hadn't met you know Chris Sheets and I um, met probably my first, after I've been in real estate about a year and a half. And we partnered up and he kind of took me under his wing in a way and mentored me. And, and we just developed a really great friendship and I learned a lot from him. And I think, you know, they say you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with or whatever. And there's gotta be some truth to that. Um, because I, not only have I seen my business, you know, continue to succeed and, and grow, um, by being around some of these great people, but I've also just enjoyed it. And, uh, I'm a, I'm the kind of guy I love to learn. I, I love to uh, develop. I'm, I've kind of developed 
uh, a passion for growth and learning and, um, you know, whether it's uh, in business or personally or whatever. And so just surrounding myself with people, um, like that keeps me, keeps me in it. Um, you know, the real estate stuff, you know, the, the way that deals are structured and the way that they come and go, it, it fits my personality. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like the energizer bunny. I'm like, I'm over here one day, I'm over here. And so like having that, um, time limit on a, a deal kind of keeps my attention. You know, I can really, really focus on a project and get it done. And it's really rewarding to see, you know, some, a deal go from the beginning yep. to the end and, and also just finding people, the homes that they love and helping people sell something they think they couldn't sell or, uh, make money. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm going to quote people and I won't reference them because I don't know who's saying what, but somebody said it's more rewarding to help other people make money than to make money for yourself. And there's a truth to that. And, uh, you know, I helped a first time home buyer sell their, they bought a house with me right when I got my license and they just sold it, um, a few months ago and they walked away with a $20,000 check. They did nothing to the house. Oof. And it was like they were floored, you know, and I, I was honored to be part of it, yeah. you know, um, and so that's the kind of stuff. It's so many different things, but I would say first and foremost is just surrounding yourself with people you admire and, and having the opportunity to, to make decisions that significantly impact your life um, and just taking control that way. So it's awesome. Okay. Man. That's awesome. And, and you met, and, and again, that, that is why, and we've talked about this several times, you know, over the last, you know, six or seven months is that, that's one of the big reasons that we created this company yeah. and this office is to surround ourselves with like-minded individuals who we can all learn from. Right. And I just, I always get just, I've, I've been in it 13 years. I've been in several different office environments yeah. and just why wouldn't you choose to be in a great environment? And the thing is, this environment is not for everybody, right. right? And and that's okay. Yeah. And like there may be like some people that don't like coming into the office and they don't like seeing anyone. That's great. Right. I can give you a list of a few places that they really don't care if they ever see you. Sure. They will welcome you with open arms. Sure. But, you know, here we just want to do something different. Yeah. And uh, I love it, man. And, and you're a big part of that. And so I want to thank you for embracing it. And, yeah. Um, it's crazy what a difference it makes though, isn't it? Yeah. It I really mean, does. it's just, it's just crazy. Yeah. It's fun. So, all right, I want to hear this one from okay. you. All right. Because I think it's going to be good. Okay. <laughs> Don't so build it up. If you could go back, day one, Ryan. Yeah. Okay. What would you tell yourself on that day one that you wish that you knew? Yeah. You know it now. Mm -hmm. And you're like, man, I wish I would have known that. <laughs> Please. I'm going to sit back. A day one. Go ahead. Quick, quick answer would be uh, that the buyer has to pay for the home inspection. It's not part of closing costs. Um, that was the first mistake I made in real estate. Day one. <laughs> there, no, thank you. For uh, sure. No, I'm kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding, but that probably would be just because it's practical. And I, and I screwed up a, uh, a situation on accident by telling the buyer that that was part of closing costs. Anyway, um, okay. the, the real answer would probably be, you know, as tough as that question is because you, you can't go back. And so then you start to like, feel a sense of regret and whatever. Um, but you can move forward in a better way. And I think the main, uh, what I've kind of come to define as my purpose as a realtor and as a person is just to bring value and to find ways to bring value to the interactions that you're in. Um, and not, to, not to be a taker. You know, I think a lot of people look at, as, at realtors as takers um, they kind of come in, they charge a, a fat commission and they walk away from the deal paid better than the work that they put in. And so I would just tell myself, find ways to bring value, educate yourself and be an asset. Um, and don't be greedy. Don't be, um, eager for a deal, be eager to serve, be eager to help. Um, and just learn, like learn stuff. Go, go find out the neighborhoods and the, and the sale average sales prices and the things that the realtor should know. Um, so that you're an asset to the conversations that you have and the people that ask you questions or you interact with. So yeah, love just it. educate. Love it. Yeah. That's, and that, that 
again, that's you're such timely answers, Ryan. You're doing so good. You're doing so good. But I'll tell you right now. So it's May. What's today? 16th. 16th, 2019. And just yesterday, I listened to probably 90 minutes of different podcasts all about all this disruption that's happening in the Mm. market. And we're actually going to do a a class here pretty soon at the brokerage about the state state of the the market um, for us as agents because – there's just so much like stuff to unpack with that. Sure. But I think the the key to it, like you just said, is like, I do think a lot of people, they do want to be takers. Mm-hmm. Right. And we have to do more now than we've ever had to do in the past. Like that's the way we have to look at it. Right. Like we have to bring so much value. Right. And I'm going to bring up an example like Amazon. Okay. Right. That they're the, the, biggest and best company in the world right right? and you think they would be like we're good right Right. we're good this is what we've done look at what we've done but no jeff jeff bezos the you know the ceo and owner he he said you know we've done this two-day shipping thing we can do better like let's shoot for one day shipping pretty cool and this is from the biggest and the best company in the world and they're saying let's let's up the bar and so for us yeah, we have to do the same thing. Right. Like in today's world, we have to do more. Right, right. It it comes back to like what people expect, and you know the two biggest things that a realtor has to do, I think, are define expectations or set expectations, and then exceed them. And as a as a realtor in 2019, we have more help than any realtors have ever had in the past. You know, the value proposition of a realtor in 1978 was literally faxing driving contracts to their seller's house or buyer's house to get signed and then driving it across town while using pay phones, et cetera. We have so many tools now that, that our life is so easy um, that our value proposition has to change. It has to be different. And people were paid, you know, realtors were paid the percentage that they were paid back then um, based on running errands for people more or less. And we don't, we don't have to do that anymore. So we have to find a new way. You know, people didn't have Zillow in 1985. So they didn't know what was for sale. And so the value proposition of the realtor was what's for sale. You know, that's no longer my value proposition. If that's my value proposition, I'm like missing out on a huge portion of what I would say is my job description now. And, um, so you just kind of have to adjust. Your, your own expectations, and then you have to help set um, your, your client's expectations. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And, th- and that's it. And you, you just have to find ways for you to raise the bar and to bring it. You know, right. I mean, that's just period. And if people uh, complain about that, well, that's on you because things are changing. And, you know, right. I look at the way we live our life today. Right. Look, at, I mean, look at this, what we're doing. We've got, we got two cameras. We got, we got professional mics. When we put this out, it sounds and looks like a very good production. Right. Well, five years ago, ten, we, we couldn't do this. Possible, ten right? year, no, we could, yeah. we'd have to be in a studio somewhere figuring out how to do this. And right. then how do we get it to people? Well, things change, yep. you know? So that's just part of it. But that that's a great... And the way that you're looking at it, I think that's the way you have to look at it. And yep. I love that, man. And uh, for... Yeah. If, and if you're around Ryan's... I mean, my dad's been a realtor for 30 years and... Yeah, back in the 80s and early 90s. You know how they found out about new listings? They came out in a book right. that you had to go around and pick up right. to know what's coming up on the market. Yep. Think think about that. Right, right. Okay? That, I'll leave that one yeah, there. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, okay, man. Most memorable moment in real estate. <laughs> I bring so, it. You probably already know. I mean, so, I, yeah, so... I was conflicted on whether or not to tell this story. Oh uh, boy! But it, there's no way that that anything's going to beat this story. Bring it. Um, at one point, I had one of the toughest things to juggle. Of course, is when you're selling a house and that client is also buying, um, right? So you've you're, you've got the listing, and then they're going to go buy something. That's a really complicated scenario, and there's a lot of moving pieces that have to fit into place. So I had a, a seller who had found another house. Their house was under contract. They got another one uh, under contract they were going to move into, and we were about a week out from closing and got a text from the wife saying, "Um, 
can we do a power of attorney? My husband's not going to make it to closing. So I was like, yeah, sure. Well, I'll need him to, you know, come in and sign. She's like, well, he can't come in to sign. Um, and I, you know, she's been a little cryptic and I was like, man, is he dead? What's going on? Like, this is not good. You know, Cause she would not respond. And then she'd say, he's not going to be there. And I thought maybe he left the country for something or a marital problem. I don't know. Um, and, uh, so ultimately, <laughs> you know where this is going. So ultimately, um, found out, I called her up and I was like, what's going on? Turns out he's in jail. And, uh, so we ended up having to go to the jail with a notary. Okay. And, um, I'll just do all nameless, just so nobody's incriminated here. Yes, no names. But a, a friend offered to do the notary for us. And, and we got there, got it signed, and we're walking out. And he's like, oh, I got to put my notary number on this before we go. And he looked it up in his phone, and he was like, oh, uh, man, Ryan, my notary just expired last month. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Anyway, it, 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 the whole thing just, it, it was like one thing after another, the whole thing fell apart, you know, um, one piece at a time. And then we slowly built it back together. We got, he had a friend who was an attorney who came and helped us notarize a document, but ultimately it was a very stressful, uh, c- confusing situation. Um, but we got it done and, uh, closed both deals in one day. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was a memorable. I don't think, you know, finding people in, in, in the bed when you're showing a house and stuff like that's always like super weird. And that happened early on in my career, but, um, uh, n- nothing beats, uh, jailbird. So you went to jail, went to jail to have a client sign a, a, a notary, a notary, a document a p- with power with of attorney, power of attorney. Sorry. Yeah. With a, no- with, with the a notary. notary. We took the notary with us and the wife and yeah, it was, it was a treat. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one, man. Yeah, I have not heard that one okay. yet. I mean, I know I've heard it, but yeah. that's you, wow. You know, you know yeah. what I mean. That's yeah. I, 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 that that one may take the yeah. yeah that was you, a fun yeah. one. Wow, yeah. that's going to be it. Well, you know, I, I've dubbed you one of the the most interesting people in real estate in Central Kentucky oh, because boy. of your what you did before real estate. So, give us what did you do before real estate? All right, so. Yeah, I'll try to be brief on this because there's a lot of different things. I uh, graduated college and had just gotten married and so needed a job. Um, so first job I uh, I saw online was like a sales job at Windstream. So I, I went and it was like one of those like mass hirings. Like you know, if you look back on it, you're like, Brian, don't do that. <laughs> um, but I was like, eh, they're going to hire me and – uh, the interview was like 10 minutes long. Um, they're like, you start tomorrow. So I didn't really know what I was getting into you know, outside sales. Well, it turns out I was door to door knocking, uh, selling windstream. Boom. I uh, did it for two weeks, made it two weeks. It was the middle of January. Um, cause I graduated in December and, uh, made it two weeks knocking doors, selling windstream. I mean, I, uh, it was, it was the worst job of my life. Wow. Um, Anyway, so from there, I went and worked for a a contractor selling roofs for him, um, which was much better. But still, it was very brutal. Um, You know, I did that for four years. Wow. Eventually, I was doing some project management and, you know, selling some remodel jobs and stuff like that. Um, And so I got a lot of experience, and it was a a great learning uh, experience. I met a lot of great people, including Stephen Algus, who went on to be a realtor and kind of inspired and encouraged me to look into it. So, and I met some of my best friends in the world, um, doing that job, you know? So, um, I, I'm super grateful for that. Um, after that, when I decided to get in real estate, I went and got a job at Lowe's cause I wanted the kind of that, that consistent paycheck and uh, I worked at Lowe's, uh, in the lawn and garden, loved that. Um, but I had also applied for this job at the airport and, uh, it was, it was kind of this, uh, cool opportunity where I could work at night and, uh, and still, you know, do real estate stuff during the day. So I got my real estate license while I was at Lowe's and then I switched over to the airport and I went in at, at 10 PM every night and just worked a, a four hour shift, um, throwing bags on the planes, pulling bags off the planes, cleaning the planes down, you know, just that kind of stuff. And, uh, 
so the the reason I ended up going that was was just to get the the flight benefits. You can you know you can fly standby um, for basically nothing for thirty bucks a flight or whatever. Um, so so my wife was pretty excited about that, and we ended up doing that. I did I worked there for just over a year while I was getting started in real estate. Then give give the uh, give the audience here where did you where did you where did you fly during this year? Give me some give us some goodies. <sighs> So we, we flew around a little bit. It was, um, so the easiest places are always like the direct flights, uh, and Lexington doesn't have that many. So we got like Charlotte, we got Philly, um, and we have Houston. So not, not terribly exciting, but those are fun places. We went to Philly and, um, I went up to Minnesota one time, Minneapolis, uh, we, I took my wife to Paris for her birthday one time. That was kind of fun. We just went for a weekend. Um, cause you know, if you're flying for free, it's not as big of a deal if you only stay for a couple of days. And, and I didn't, you know, I didn't have vacation days at the airport. Yeah. Uh, we went to Tokyo one time. That was our biggest trip. Um, but mostly, um, people, and then I went to Florida one time my buddy bought a car in Florida and I flew down and drove it back for him. <laughs> um, yeah, just stuff like that, you know, just like, I went to Colorado a couple times, uh, Denver, because that was a, a two leg flight, um, and I had a friend who lived out there in Boulder. So, yeah, I mean, I bounced around a little bit uh, for sure, but it was really difficult because if you're flying standby, you can get bumped off a flight at any point. So I slept, yeah. I slept in a couple of airports. And, oh, yeah, it was, it was, it sounds glamorous. It was pretty brutal in the moment. Um, talking about it's a lot more fun than sleep, it is. sleeping in an airport. Yeah, I'm just, let's just focus on that part. And I like how you just you lumped in uh Denver and Philly and Houston and then you just like, "Oh, in Paris for a weekend." And oh, yeah, we went to Tokyo. And then, you know, I went to Florida again. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah, I mean, I guess as you travel, it's like you you're going to sit in a plane for a number of hours and yeah. you're going to be somewhere. Yeah. Um and so you can't like, there's not really like a enigma to it. Yeah. I don't even know if that's the right word, but yeah. anyway, well, you, you, you can go wherever awesome. you want. Yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can go wherever you want. You just got to spend the money or spend the time. And w- when you're flying standby, it's the time we, we picked Tokyo ultimately because we wanted to fly first class and it had a bunch of empty seats. Oh, uh, we were going to either go there or, or Buenos Aires. Oh. And so we went to Tokyo because they had like five empty first class seats. First class to Tokyo. Now, yeah. did you know that like that's like, was it like the day before? Like, hey, there's five seats. Are we going? Or yeah. did you kind of, how's that? We, we, we were pretty much anticipating that it was going to be Tokyo because the way you know, like I could see, okay. how many, I can see exactly how many empty seats there are. Yeah. Um, per flight. But yeah. I knew which weekend. We always picked the weekend and then we'd pick the location yeah. within a week of going because uh, and then if, you know, if last minute p- plans change, we would figure it out. But, yeah. um, that happened to work out. Love it. Uh, so the fly by the, by the seat of your pants thing really kind of, that, that really uh, was the definer of that year. So for a, a planner like me, that may not be the best right. scenario. Well, my wife's a planner, but she, she enjoyed it. And, yeah. So to speak, I mean, it was yeah. stressful. Of I like course. It. it was stressful when we were in, stuck in an airport airport and didn't know where we were going to go. Oh, and our flights were booked and. That was stressful, very stressful, but yeah, we had fun. I love it. Was it was a good time. I love it. Well, now we're going to move on to Ryan's Ryan's hot spots yeah. around Central Kentucky. Ooh. So lay it on me. What what are your go to? Now I know I know you're you're a coffee guy. You 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 are kind of you you've uh, you kind of pushed me along in my coffee journey, which I appreciate because yeah, yeah. I'm a big coffee guy now. So just laying out, like, what, where are we going? Coffee, food, uh, sightseeing, just kind of what are some of your favorite spots? Man, good stuff. Um, so favorite, favorite coffee, actually, recently I've really been enjoying this new place of Manchester Coffee Company. Um, oh, yeah. Time out. Time out. Hold on. So something about Ryan, I got to tell this story. So he took me to Manchester Coffee Company. I always like going to new places with people that, that have already been. I feel more comfortable that way. Uh, and we walk in and I literally thought I was on a, like an episode of Cheers or something or like Ryan walked in and everyone knew him and like we're waving him down. And it took us probably five minutes just to get to the counter to order because everyone wanted to talk to him. And he's introducing me to everybody. Then he's talking to the owner and 
But anyway, it was really cool, and that's just to go say that. I was just trying to impress you. you it worked. I invite all my friends. The setup that worked. Day. Yeah. The setup worked, bro. All right, keep going. Um, but yeah, I feel, I feel like they make a good, a good cup of coffee, and it's kind of a cool vibe. Um, but you know, I make I make coffee at the house too, and and here, honestly, here has has been really enjoyable. But um, if I'm going to go out and work. Uh, the environment is almost just as important as the flavor of the coffee or the quality of the coffee. Um, and so, yeah, I'm still kind of searching for that perfect spot, but I do, I do really like the vibe at Manchester coffee company. Um, I also really like, you know, if it's an afternoon, I really like going to the Kentucky native cafe. Oh. Um, if you haven't been, that's, that's probably one of my favorite spots to go work. If you're going to work alone or, or meet somebody, if the weather's nice, it's, it's a, you know, it's a greenhouse basically, you know, they sell plants and so forth, but they've kind of turned the back of their establishment into like a little bar cafe. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to go there soon. Have you never been? No. Oh gosh, man. Yeah. It's awesome. Okay. It's, it's I like, a, check that it's out. an oasis. I mean, you walk in there and you will be like, I cannot believe this is real. Wow. It's just this beautiful garden that's got tables and this beautiful wooden walkway up to the like um, little bar area where you order your drinks. And it's really fun. Really a good little date spot. Take your kids there. They've got a little play area for kids. Pretty cool. I like it. Highly recommend. Um, but restaurants, my favorite would be Middle Fork. Um, which is in the distillery district, which is another one of my favorite areas uh, to visit. Um, just, a, just a fun spot, lots of parking and different things to do. A couple of breweries, um, but the Middle Fork uh, Kitchen Bar is is by far my favorite restaurant in town. Boom. Okay. Yeah. The Middle Fork. All right. Yeah. So that, that one uh, is, is a treat that's like date night and like celebrating uh, type event. Uh, so yeah, I, I really like that. Um, yeah. I want more. Chipotle. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, Chipotle is good. <laughs> I love me some Chipotle. Tell everybody your Chipotle tip. Cause you get the bowl, yeah, but you get this, I get the salad bowl. So it's kind of healthy. You kind of feel like it's healthy and then you can just add a tortilla on the side and you kind of make your own tortilla. It's usually tortilla on the side. Yeah, you get a little extra. That I feel it. like they always fill the bowl up more than the burrito. So there we go. Yeah. Insider. Tip if, if you want, Ryan if Kimmel's. you want more food, of course, I like it. True. Which is, I think that's me. Yeah. I'm a value guy. <laughs> <laughs> Any other spots you want to highlight that are your, your faves or. Hmm, man. Um, you just have so many. I just yeah, want you to keep. There's what, so many. Well, give me one more. One more. So for like drinks just or food whatever, or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I mean, there's a couple of cool spots downtown that let's I go. Come on. Well, you know, the guys already mentioned Coeur d'Alene. I really do like Coeur d'Alene. I think it's a fun vibe. Yeah. Uh, really good food. Yeah. Um. But right near there is a really fun little Irish bar called. Molly Brooks. Okay. And not very many people go there. Um, but it, it feels like you're in Ireland kind of when you go in. And I kind of like that. Most of the bartenders are Irish. Oh. Kind of like McCarthy's, which is another little Irish bar downtown. Um, most people know about McCarthy's because it's kind of become like a college bar, or used to be, um, party bar. But Molly Brooks is kind of fun. You can go in there and get you a pint of Guinness, and it's kind of dingy and dark and lots of, I don't know, lots of Irish uh, memorabilia. It's just kind of a fun, like escape and have a drink place. Nice. Um, so I just mentioned something that's a little bit different, but, uh, there's, I mean, there's so many great spots, um, for, for, I love it. for food and I love it. Lexington's a foodie town. Yeah. I come to you for advice on the new downtown I can't keep up with everything. So I come to Ryan and he always fills me in on what's, what's happening down there. So yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, man. So, what okay now a little downtime all yeah. right so you and amy gonna a little downtime for you what's your what's your spot vacation wise where you like going to recharge the batteries and it could also be yeah. uh it could be anywhere right right so amy and i i don't know that if we've done one location twice yet so we're our our downtime is almost always going somewhere new uh, except for Asheville. we go to Asheville. Maybe a couple times a year. I like I like Asheville because it's you know three four hours away. 
tons of good food. It's a really walkable city, a little bit smaller in Lexington. And, uh, it's just kind of a fun little weekend trip. Um, so maybe Asheville would be the right answer for you, but, um, yeah, we don't have like a beach that we go to. We don't have like a, a lake or whatever, you know, we, we're always kind of mixing it up. If we've got, if we've got the vacation, we're going to go see a new city That's or cool. we're going to go to a new country, something like that. If, cool. if we have the time. I like it. Yeah. Cool. I never knew that. Uh, now give me something that around, it could be around town, it, really anything that you wish people like knew more about. Mm. And it may have been Native Cafe. It probably but, was. I might have skipped that. Yeah. Okay. Oopsies. Well, that's good because I've yeah. never, I've, I've heard of that place, but yeah. I've never, and I was like, is this open to anybody? Do you have to have no a special knock to get in no, the they door? Have, they have a huge parking lot. It's really kind of cool. So you, if you come off of, uh, I guess it's High Street, you can uh, you can just park right there after you pass Ransom. Yeah. I have, it's on the left. You just get right in. Tons of parking. And I'm just, just going to tell my... I know Ryan Kamenish to the, see the, if that does anything. The, for the cafe part doesn't open till 4, but usually the gate is open, and they don't care if you like just go... Because the greenhouse is open. You know, they're selling plants and all that on the other so side. So you just go back there and... Just go chill. Yeah, they out. got Wi-Fi, and yeah, just enjoy it. Can you bring, like, a coffee with you? Yeah, you bring your own coffee, man. Oh, my goodness. I know. I'm going to go right now. It's a treat. All right. Let's, let's go over there. Um, Something that people don't know about you and i would have said well, the, now they know everything and now now yeah. seriously but is there anything else that you're just like you know people don't really know that about me well the homeschool thing i threw that out there berea college uh that that's a cool you know part of my story i was yeah. i was grateful to get to go there i have five siblings which is kind of a big deal yeah um and i'm grateful for all of them love all of them so much um uh, and they they're kind of scattered around um right now but um mostly in the midwest and south here i got a couple still nearby but cool yeah big fam big fam uh what else would be oh um i'm an artist oh um so i do i, I do a lot of well i don't do a lot but i used to uh, do a lot of drawing and painting still do a little bit and um so that's that's something that um, a lot of people probably don't know about me but uh, love it yeah I, 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 I trained in college actually to do that and I played soccer in college so all this stuff man mind blown i'm trying to throw i'm just peeling throw back some the layers nuggets, my Mary. goodness yeah. this is great well ryan as we as we wrap up the podcast yeah. here right this is the question we always ask everybody at the end and you know it goes back to what you've been talking about kind of the the whole mentality of especially doing what we do right now with, mm -hmm. with being a realtor, being in real estate is, you know, there has to be something at the core of doing what you do. Yeah. And I really believe that like to, to get to be truly successful, especially moving into the future in real estate, like what is your why? Mm. So what, what's your why, big why in real estate? It's the big why. The big why. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, so I think real estate is just kind of an extension of my life, right? So it's, it's my job, but it's also part of who I am now. Um, and so my big why is kind of tied into like who I am as a person. It's my faith. It's, it's what's most important to me. Um, and that's just to live a generous life of love for other people. And, you know, my, my Christian faith is such that life is not about me. Um, and, and ultimately that's like who, and what I believe God is, is like, it's, it's about other people. And the more that we can embrace that and live that out, uh, the more that we're going to understand who God is. So not to get like real philosophical or religious on you, but like, if you're asking me my big why, it's going to have to like tie into, you know, who I am as a person, what's most important to me. Um, and so, yeah, to sum it up is, is living generously and loving, uh, unconditionally. Yeah. Goodness. Dude, that's that's fan. That's awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. That's that's really got chills. <laughs> just take just loss of words here. Just give me a second. No, whatever. Wow. Well, I love that man. That that's awesome. And again, you know, getting to know you over the last. 
probably two years since we kind of got introduced. It, it's been awesome getting to know you, getting to hang, Likewise, hang out man. with you, yeah. working with Likewise. you. So uh, very, very thankful, very grateful that we've uh, met at this point in our journey. Yeah, man. So, uh, man, Ryan, if people want to get a hold of you, follow you, social media-esque, where should they, they mm. get you at? Well, I do have Instagram, Ryan Kamenish Realtor. Pretty cool. I came up with that. That's a good one. Um, I'm on Facebook. If you can spell my last name or if it's in linked in this thing. Yes, we'll link it. There's not many other ones out there. Perfect. Um, so if you just type Ryan Kamenish into Google, you're going to be you're gonna be looking pretty good. If you can spell that name. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, that's Ryan Kamenish, folks. One of uh, just such an interesting guy. And I, lo- I love his story. I love when he gets going on his different topics. He's always... Uh, whenever he's around, I just think it's better, you know, like our meetings are better when he's there. Our collaboration hours are better when he's there. So, uh, so that's Ryan. We're going to have, and again, guys subscribe, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, videos are on YouTube. We post it to Facebook as well. So, uh, subscribe. You'll always get alerted when we post new episodes every week. And, uh, Ryan really appreciate you being on any final words. Man, I'm just uh, grateful that you're doing this. This is, uh, it's, I'm honored to be a part of it. It's really fun to just get to hear other people's stories and get to even share my own. It's, it's awesome. So gr- thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, it's been an honor. You're welcome, guys. Well, I'm Todd Back. He's Ryan Kamenish, and we'll see you guys next time. Do you have like a little button that it, you should have like a sound like. <laughs> We, there's no intro or outro. Yeah. We just we go right in and we go right then out. You know when to-